Happy Easter, everybody. Um, I didn't expect to be talking to my iPad once again, but I am. But this morning is Easter Sunday, and uh, there are lots of things happening, and you're very welcome uh, to take part in this. Um, initially, back before Christmas, we were thinking, oh, maybe um, Easter Sunday will be our first Sunday all back together in the building, but it's still not to be. As leaders, we're looking at it, and stewards as well now, and uh, you know, maybe July the 4th is a possibility, um, but uh, what's this space? But anyway, welcome, and bless you all.
Thanks, Larry. <laughs> Thanks very much for joining us. I hope you're well, well, we are. Oh, splendid. Welcome to today's show. Today we're talking about Easter. Marvellous. We have some guests joining our show today. Firstly, representing the younger generation, everybody give it up for Miss Know-It-All. Thank you, Miss Know-It-All. Thank you for inviting me back on your show. That's all right. Just ask me a question and I will give you the answer because I know everything. Perfect. Thanks very much, Miss Noel. And our second guest now. <clears throat> He's representing the older generation. He has a sore back. It is Mr. Experience. Hi, Mr. Uh, Experience. Hello, yes. Uh, you call me Mr. Experience because, well, I've been around a while and... I know quite a bit about a lot of things. Wow, thank, thanks very much, Mr. Experience. Thank you very much for joining our show. Right, the topic of the show is... Smeh! Smeh! Uh, sorry, but... Are you aware of this? Uh, we're trying to say the show, do you mind? Well, you can stay there. Just try not to say anything, alright? Okay, thank you. Okay, today we're going to look at what is Easter all about? And I happen to know this answer, actually. I'll come back to you guys in a minute for your answer, but I know Easter is all about holidays. See, everybody goes on holiday around Easter. You go camping, the sun's shining, you go to the beach, you have, oh, fish and chips. I love the sound of that. Easter is all about holidays. But anyway, let's see what our guests think. Let's know it all. What do you think? <laughs> Easter is all about... Well, Easter is not about holidays. Easter is all about money! Holidays? Yeah, everyone knows that Easter is the time that all the bunny rabbits come out. Oh, well, uh, I'm not sure about that. I haven't heard that one before, but okay. Right. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ms. Noel. Right, moving on. Mr. Experience, what do you think Easter is all about? Well, it's certainly not about holidays or bunnies. No, Easter is all about eggs. There's ordinary eggs from chickens, but my favourite is those Cadbury's cream eggs. They are so delicious. I have heaps and heaps at Easter time. They are yummy. So that's my answer. Eggs. Perfect. Everybody loves chocolate eggs or cream eggs are my favourite. Anyway, we've heard some um, views from all of us. <coughs> Thank you very much for joining <coughs> uh, Sorry, I, I, <coughs> I'm just filming my outro. I, I'll come to you in a minute. <coughs> the cameras are off and we can talk then. Okay, so anyway, thank you <coughs> very much. <coughs> what is it? What? <laughs> oh, a Bible! Why are, you, why are you giving me a Bible? What's this? You, you left it a page in? Oh, you, you've taped some instructions in here. What, what's this? Um, this is what Easter's all about. What? I, step one needs some paper. What? Paper? Why do I need paper? Why am I, do we seriously end time? I, I, oh, oh, perfect. Oh, brilliant. Well, as we're doing this now, everyone at home, grab yourself a piece of paper and some scissors. All you kids, get your adults to do these because don't forget scissors are sharp, sharp, sharp. Okay, right, step number one. <clears throat> take this corner and fold it over here. I wonder what this is going to be. This is exciting, isn't it? Okay, right, okay, step two. So it looks like that. Right, okay. And then you get this corner, fold it over here. Oh, I know what this is. Everybody, <clears throat> Easter is all about spending time at home with your family. Thanks very much for joining us. It's, it's not. What? Oh yeah, there's, oh, there's more instructions there. Right, okay. Um, it says to fold it in half now. Right, okay. I don't know where you're going with this, but I'm trusting you. Can we get on with this? Uh, ah! Ah! I was right all along. This is a plane. Easter is all about holidays. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for joining me. It's been amazing. Oh, this is not... Oh yeah, there's another one. Um, cut... A short bit off. Right, okay. Um, like this, is that right? Okay. Again, I don't know where you go with this. Let's have a look here. 
says, open it up. Oh, it's a cross. Oh. Oh. So that's what Easter's about. Okay, maybe not a paper cross, but it's about a wooden cross. You see, Easter isn't about bunnies or chocolate eggs or holidays. Jesus came and died on a cross and then three days later rose again and came back to life. And that is why we celebrate Easter today. Thanks very much for joining everybody. See you next time. I hope you stay well, because I will stay well too. Wait a minute, everybody. Goodbye. What do you need some help? Goodbye. Hi everybody, uh, Bethany and Jordan asked me to do a little uh, reflection about this year and Covid and what I've learnt. So um, with the theme of hope, here goes. So I think this past year has been so unprecedented for all of us. It has brought so much sorrow to so many in so many different ways. And for me, the biggest struggle has been really missing my family. My mum and my dad, my two brothers, my sister, my nephews, my niece, aunts and cousins and their children. There are a lot of us and I have really miss seeing them. When we moved 200 miles away to Devon, my sister made me promise that we would see each other every six weeks. And up until when Covid hit last year, we were doing pretty well. We were managing to see each other roughly every six to eight weeks. And it was great. It's great for Noah to connect with his cousins and it was great for me just to be with people, to laugh until you can't breathe anymore and just to enjoy being together. So I know it's a struggle that many of you too will have faced being far away from your loved ones. Often in life, things do not work out the way we think we want them to. And sometimes that's for really obvious reasons, but at other times it takes us much longer to understand what God's trying to teach us or what we're supposed to learn when things don't go the way we want. But I do believe that however our plans work out, if we've taken them to God, then we can be assured that the outcome is what it was supposed to be. If God is in control, then our hope for a positive outcome becomes something more than just wishful thinking. It becomes something guaranteed. One of my favourite Bible verses is found in Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. In this past strange year, I have been holding tight to that hope. To a future where we can hug our friends and our family, we can travel freely, we can be in church together and God willing, that time is drawing ever closer for us all. But the verse from Jeremiah 29 continues. In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. That is what God has been encouraging me to do this past year, to seek him wholeheartedly, to keep searching for him when things seemed so bleak. When I was missing my family, Zoom became a hope for us, a new way of connecting together. When church doors were closed, God was encouraging me to find new ways of doing my job, new ways of bringing hope to others. When we couldn't gather together as normal, at Christmas, God was pushing me to seeking him wholeheartedly to tap into his creativity and develop new ways to share his love. Covid has forced us to try and do so many new things, but in reflection, all of these things have been evidence of the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. That confidence that he does not leave us, that he is not stuck, lock, locked up in a church building, but he's alive and thriving in us. He has walked with me, exploring new ways to live out my faith. Every day has not been easy. I haven't felt that hope bubbling up in me, pushing me forward all of the time. Some days have been grey, 
and the struggle. I have missed hugs from my wider family and laughing until I can't breathe. I have miss, missed singing in church, something that always makes my heart soar with joy. But on those days, when the grey clouds have come, God has held me up. On those days, I've not sought him wholeheartedly, and yet I know that he has been holding me together. Waiting for me to offer up those feelings to him so that he could replace them with hope. Hope. The guarantee of his presence in my life. Hope. The guarantee of better days to come. Hope. The guarantee that with God, all of our plans will succeed. I have a favourite song in church and part of it says this. And I can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on. A glorious light beyond all compare. And there will be an end to these troubles. But until that day comes, we'll live to know you here on the earth. This Easter day, may your hearts be filled with joy at the knowledge that our Redeemer lives. He has risen from the grave and so our hope for our future is secure. God bless. See you soon. Between us, how high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness. Saw through the shadows of my soul The work is finished, the end is written Jesus Christ, my living hope Who could imagine so great a could fathom such boundless grace The God of ages stepped down from glory To wear my sin and bear my shame The cross has spoken, I am forgiven The King of kings calls me Came the morning that sees.
she discovered that the stone that sealed the entrance to the tomb was moved away. So she went running as fast as she could to tell Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. She told them, they've taken the Lord's body away from the tomb and we don't know where he is. Then Peter and the other disciple jumped up and ran to the tomb to go see for themselves. They started out together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He didn't enter the tomb, but peeked in and saw only the linen cloths lying there. Then Peter came behind him and went right into the tomb. He too noticed the linen cloths lying there, but the burial cloth that had been on Jesus' head had been rolled up and placed separate from the other cloths. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, went in, and after one look he believed. For until then they hadn't understood the scriptures, that prophesied that he was destined to rise from the dead. Puzzled, Peter and the other disciple then left and went back to their homes. Mary arrived back at the tomb, broken and sobbing. She stooped to peer inside, and through her tears she saw two angels in dazzling white robes, sitting where Jesus' body had been laid, one at the head and one at the feet. Dear woman, why are you crying? they asked. Mary answered, They have taken my Lord away. I don't know where they've laid him. Then she turned around to leave, and there was Jesus standing in front of her. But she didn't realise that it was him. He said to her, Dear woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Mary answered, thinking he was only the gardener. Sir, if you've taken his body somewhere else, tell me, and I will go and... Mary, Jesus interrupted her. Turning to face him, she said, Rabboni. Jesus cautioned her, Mary, don't cling to me, for I haven't yet ascended to God, my Father. And he's not only my Father and God, but now he's your Father and your God. Now go to my brothers and tell them what I've told you, that I'm ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Then Mary Magdalene left to inform the disciples of her encounter with Jesus. I have seen the Lord, she told them, and she gave them his message. Well, he's alive. It's Resurrection Sunday. And as Christians, that's really what it's all about. Resurrection, new life. A new life in Jesus. Um, Nick Page 
which, uh, you know, I do quote sometimes. Um, he said this. He said, the church begins on a Sunday morning, AD 33, when a man whom everyone thought was dead was found walking around in a graveyard. Christianity, core business, is resurrection. And there's always life after death. There's always hope. And that's what Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday is all about, hope because there is always that hope. And yet, you know, we've got that hope, we, we've got all those promises, and yet we still find, you know, things not go exactly right, and uh, yeah, not as we always wanted. And uh, someone's described that um, we're, uh, we're all in a place of already, uh, but not yet. Romans chapter six, there's some verses there. I'm just gonna, you know, just read them to you and then we'll look a bit further into what that means. Romans six, verse two says that we are dead to sin, that we've died to sin. Verse seven says that we're <clears throat> set free from sin. Uh, verse 12 says, not let sin reign. Uh, verse 13, not offer any part to sin. So sin is, is defeated and yet, you know, things seem to happen, don't they? And you sort of ask the question, are we dead to sin or not? Are we still struggling or are we free? And I guess the answer to those all of those things is yes. Uh, a chap called uh, Ben Green uh, wrote, and I love the phrase he uses, he said that as Christians, uh, we're the in-betweeners. <laughs> All those verses in Romans that, you know, it says we are, and yet we still struggle. We are free, yet we still struggle because we're the in-betweeners. Sin is defeated. Today, Resurrection Day, we know that Christ has won the victory. Christ has won the victory. The war is won, but until he returns, we've still got battles. And boy, do we know that over this last 12 months, don't we? We really do. Sin and death are defeated. Yet, not yet destroyed. The two great powers that none of us can escape from, sin and death. You know, it's, it's a fact. We can't escape from it. But it's been overcome. Life in Christ has begun, yet it's not complete. Not completed yet. And the Holy Spirit is at work in us, yet uh, we do still struggle with sin. I think if we're honest, that's true, isn't it, for all of us? Or is that just me? No, I think it may be all of us. So we need to stand on the solid ground. The solid ground of what God in Christ has uh, already done for us. Yet waiting, I would say eagerly waiting for what has yet uh, to be finished, to be complete. Jesus on the cross said, it is finished, it's been done. But since then, we've had to um, live our lives. And as we wait, the Holy Spirit is at work in us. And he's at work in us, conforming us uh, to the image of Christ, which is brilliant. Resurrection Day reminds us that we have a hope. And I'm reminded of the, uh, the words of the song from Matt Redman. Um, we have a home, eternal home. But for now... We walk this broken world. You walked it first. You walked it first. You know our pain. Jesus was there before us. But you show hope can rise again up from the grave. So abide with me. And then the song goes on. Oh love that will not let me go. And that's the brilliant thing about the resurrection, about today, Easter Sunday. It's a love that will not 
let us go. Will not let us go. Jeff Lucas just finished with some stuff that he said, and I shared this last Sunday, it was Palm Sunday. I shared this with Elaine uh, doing their service for that. <clears throat> Jeff Lucas talked about this. He said, on Palm Sunday, let's praise him for who he is. That's what happened on Palm Sunday. But unfortunately, that didn't last. A week after, less than a week after, <clears throat> they were actually um, saying, let's kill him, let's get rid of him in a very short time. So let's praise him for who he is, but let's continue to do that. Good Friday, let's thank him for what he's given for us, for what he's done for us. But as the old American preacher said, it's Friday, but hey, Sunday's coming. And today, Easter day, let's be alive in him. Let's praise him. Let's thank him. Let's be alive in him. Still uh, a work to be completed. But still knowing real life in Christ. True life in Christ. So bless you all. And Lord bless us all. And until we actually physically meet. Which who knows when. Hoping not too long ahead. We're still alive. The church is still alive. It's all about the resurrection. In fact, Nick Page at the end of the book that I was reading says, hey, but it's the resurrection, stupid. <laughs> but that's what it is. So let's praise him. Let's thank him. Let's trust him. And let's be alive in Christ. Amen.
Hey everyone, happy Easter to you all. It seems crazy that it's been more than a year since we've seen some of you and uh, as a family we can't wait to, to get back to church and to worship and to have fellowship with you all once more. We're going to spend uh, just a short time now uh, just praying, uh, reflecting on the story of Easter and uh, thinking of others as well around us at this time. So let's bow our heads and spend a short time in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this special time of year, this Easter period. A time of great joy and great celebration, but also tinged with a bit of sadness too. We think of the events in the Holy Week leading up to uh, Jesus' death and Easter Sunday. The distress that Jesus faced. The injustice of it all. The ridicule he suffered. And the pain he endured. And ultimately his death on a cross. We thank you for that sacrifice. And for all that it means for us. And Lord, we ask for your forgiveness too, for our sins which held him there. Father, have mercy on us. But I want to thank you this morning that the story doesn't stop there. And that's why we can also have a great hope and have great joy this morning and celebrate. Because the story doesn't end there. Because good has overcome evil. Light has overcome darkness. Sins are forgiven. We have hope. We have a future. Because Jesus has risen. And may we know that joy and that hope and that certainty in our hearts this morning. We know that the last year and a bit has been very difficult. Incredibly difficult for some. And we know that some people are just crying out for a bit of hope. They need to find that joy again in their lives. Help us as a church and as individuals to, to reflect that joy, that hope in the coming days. As we see people, as we talk to people on the phone, as we spend time with work colleagues. Help us to reflect the true brilliance of the Easter story. We think of those in our fellowship and in our wider community who are really struggling at this time. We pray for those who are suffering bereavement, those who have health problems, physical and mental for those who are just finding life just a real struggle, a real hardship at present. Father, make us aware of those people. Help us to help them where we can. Help us encourage them, help us support them. And as we look ahead at perhaps meeting up again in the near future, may those issues be very much in our minds as we perhaps seek new direction in the way you want us to to go forward with church we pray that everyone would feel welcome that they would uh, feel that church is a place of safety that they could come to and worship and just find out more about you and about this hope that you can give us Father, thank you for this time of year as well in the world we see around us with spring. As we see new life in the fields, in the hedgerows, in our gardens. Thank you for the, the birds that we can hear and the lambs that we see out in the field. For crops that are being sown. Thank you for this amazing part of the world which we live in, 
we are so grateful, especially no more so than over the last 12 months, how fortunate we are to live here. May we never take it for granted. And as we reflect on new life and Easter, we think of the new life that you offer all of us if we put our faith and trust in you. So, Father, thank you for this time of year. Thank you for Easter and thank you for the incredible news and reality it brings to each and every one of us. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you've been blessed by what you've heard. And uh, thank you for all those who've taken part. And, and I just want to mention a special thank you to Jordan and Beth, who've actually put all this together. There's quite a bit of work and quite a bit of technical work to do that I can talk to my iPad, but that's as far as I can go. So thank them for doing that. So we'll see each other physically in this church in not too far ahead, we hope. But uh, until then, as I've said before, and may have said a couple of times, I don't know, I seem to have done a lot of talking, but um, the church, the people, it's still alive. And uh, we're going to now uh, look at some photographs, which some of you hopefully uh, have sent in. I haven't bothered because you're seeing plenty enough of me anyway on the, on the screen. So that'll be enough. Uh, don't want to frighten too many people. Enjoy the rest of the day and uh, yeah, thank you to everybody and we will see you soon. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for Resurrection Day. <laughs> thank you so much that in you we have life. In us it's not yet complete, we're still a work in progress but you have finished the work. You have completed the work and therefore we can stand on that solid ground, solid ground, which is Jesus. So we thank you. Thank you for each other. Thank you for us as a church family, even though for 12 months now, we haven't actually physically been able to meet. But uh, thank you for each other. And when we do meet, may we just be appreciative of each other so bless us we pray be with us we pray and we thank you for all that you've done as the old hymn writer said father god we praise you for all that's past and we trust you for all that's to come
greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awaits.